what went wrong here, first of all? Well, as you, as you just mentioned, the, the Free Democrats walked away from the talks, but it seems as if the difficulty within the talks was between the uh, Merkel's CDU sister party in Bavaria, a very conservative party, uh, which wanted to see a cap on immigration, uh, 200,000 uh, people, new people uh, uh, c coming into uh, Germany for asylum, and the Greens on the other side, which uh, uh, wanted to see no cap and, in fact, wanted to see uh, further uh, uh, flexibility on exactly who was allowed to ask for uh, asylum. So you had these two parties uh, who, were, who were fighting over this immigration issue, yet it was the Free Democrats who walked out, and they said that, uh, really, there were too many contradicting, uh, contradictory, uh, 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 you know, various plans and policies that were put into this coalition document in the first place, and they say that no government is better than bad government. Oh, Belgium didn't have a government for years, but that's another matter altogether. So what happens next? Is there a possibility that they get round the table once again? Uh, there is that possibility, but it looks as if, first of all, Mrs Merkel, who came out uh, after, the, uh, after these talks collapsed, uh, which was just before midnight in Berlin, so she, uh, she said that she's going to actually uh, consult with the president. Uh, now, there's a few choices she's probably got on the table. One is that uh, she will try and lead a, uh, a minority government uh, with, with her uh, CDU uh, uh, party behind her. That's never been done in Germany, not since the new uh, system was put into place after World War II. Um, she could potentially go back to the uh, socialists who she governed with in the last coalition, but that govern, uh, government was so disastrous for the socialists that they, uh, they had their worst performance since World War II as well. So the socialists have said, no, we certainly don't want to do that. Uh, and then finally, uh, she could try and start talks again, or they could talk about new elections. Now, that is a big risk because they're all very concerned that the populist uh, and anti-immigrant alternative for Deutschland might be able to get even more votes than it already had, and it might take those votes away from the uh, Bavarian sister party of the CDU, uh, the one that was um, wanting to see a cap on immigration, because that's a party which faces uh, elections in Bavaria uh, coming up this year, uh, next year, uh, and, and it's worried that the alternative for Deutschland might take even more votes away from it. Uh, David, you know, Germany obviously being the, the, the leading country in Europe, certainly with the leading economy, what's the upshot for the rest of Europe and, you know, things like Brexit negotiations? Well, I, it, it means that for the time being we're not going to see any firm leadership coming from Germany on any of these matters, and that, that, that includes the, uh, the Brexit negotiations. So uh, it's going to be very difficult to really see... Uh, any, any leadership, and that's what the big problem is, and that's probably why we're seeing the euro fall. Although I think it's also interesting, just looking at the currency, uh, looking at the currency sort of longer term, maybe uh, this year, you can see that it's done pretty well, and that is a reflection of the fact that the German economy is doing very, very well, along with the rest of Europe, which is allowing the European Central Bank to actually wind back some of those stimulus measures. So that's probably going to continue as a support for the euro, uh, and, unless, of course, we, um, we, we see uh, elections, new elections called, and then we might see some weakness, uh, as, as uh, we, we just heard earlier.